Tell me about the good old days. You know, we do tend to ramble about uh, uh, the good old days anyway. I mean, we were talking about um, soda fountains and and and, and, and <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's it's like if 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 we just go at it naturally, we come up with some things. But uh, we were talking about Star Wars. We were talking I, about um, some of our love of it. And uh, what's the first Star Wars computer game you ever played? Okay, and this, usually when I want to think of the Star Wars games, I think of the video games, but there was a computer game, which was my first Star Wars computer game. This was the for the Atari 800 computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of you kids may not know that back in the day, Atari actually made computers. This was after they were saying, you know, con- maybe video game consoles are going to be a thing in the past. Let's get into the computer market. Yeah, This was sort of the contemporary of the Commodore 64. So you may have heard of the Commodore 64. Mm-hmm. A lot of the games were available on both, but I we had an Atari 800. I got the Return of the Jedi game, and it's based on the final battle of the you know the millennium falcon going to take out the death star right okay wow and you're this little millennium falcon at the middle of the bottom of the screen you have to keep shooting up as like tie fighters and things swooming and try and knock you down and you have to get keep knocking parts of the death star off till you get to the uh you know the core then you keep hitting the core and then it blows up right and then the next level is it's back together again you got to do it all over again because <laughs> that's how the games were back then i uh <laughs> I go back, I think I go back before, I, I think this was before that. There was a DOS-based text game that was going around for a while where you are on the Death Star trying to get off. I think you, I can't remember if you were there to, to, to rescue Princess Leia and whatnot, and you had to map out the corridors of the Death Star, and at random, you could run into Darth Vader and get into a lightsaber duel with him, and you almost always died. It was much better. You were much smarter to run away. Um, <laughs> uh, but now that you mention Atari, Atar- I think it was Activision put out a couple of Star Wars licensed games. They did uh, an Empire Strikes Back game. It was a side scroller where you would play. You'd be flying in the um, what do you call it? The snow speeder, uh, right. fighting ad ats and so forth. Mm-hmm. And uh, but even before that, there was one that you played with the paddles. You know, the turning paddles. It was the Jedi Arena. And you were fighting. There was two people, one on either side. It was a two-player game. Well, you could play against the computer, too, with the remote moving between you. And when you press the button, you would fire the the, the laser from the um, remote at your opponent. And your opponent obviously could do the same. And the controller controlled both the direction of the laser blast and how you had your lightsaber up. So you kind of couldn't uh, attack and defend at the same time. You had to be very clever about how you did that. Um, I was actually surprisingly good at that game. But Oh, um, well, sounds neat. When was that made? I want to say the 80s. I think it was right around the time of Return of the Jedi. Probably. Uh, I, I will give Lucas credit. He understood the importance of video games and computer games, that they were going to be a big thing and that, mm-hmm. you know, you should you know, make games. And they even started, uh, I believe it started out as Lucasfilm games and then eventually became LucasArts. And uh, there were even original properties in this games division. It wasn't all just Star Wars games. He, they would do original stuff like uh, the Eidolon. You remember, you remember the Eidolon at all? I don't think so, no. No, it was actually like a first person. I almost argue it was sort of a progenitor of the first person shooter because you were in first person and you were around in these caves and you'd have to fight these monsters every so often that came out at you, right? And uh, it's interesting when you see a lot of the popular game genres today, a lot of these were conceived of in the early days of video games and the technology just hadn't caught up. Like they were wanting to do fighting games early on. They just couldn't figure out oh i'm I'm, I'm amazed by the 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 behind the scenes or whatever you want to call it the technical cheats that they did on things like doom where in order to do that that perspective 3d fake 3d really uh they would just have you know things get bigger and bigger on the screen to simulate uh 3d um 
and and how they had to f- think through the algorithms to determine for the game's purpose how close something was, what the range was, things like that. Um, it's very different now because now 3D games really do think in a in a 3D vector, whereas the the 2D really did not. <laughs> oh, uh, Horizon Talk is bringing up the X Wing games. Yeah, so we were we were getting to those too. I was a little later coming to the X Wing games. I didn't get into those. I guess you'd call them flight simulator combat games until Tie Fighter. Tie Fighter was my first, and then I went back to play X. Because Tie Fighter came after, so it had better. And and in fact, it was it came out, and then there was like an, a, an advanced or special edition of it that came out, and it was the special edition that I was playing. So it was better graphics. Um, and then when I went back and got X Wing. I was like, oh, this isn't as good, <laughs> but it was still good, you know, because uh, well, it was earlier. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I enjoyed that. I loved being the, the, um, they kind of thought through, okay, we're going to put you as a TIE fighter pilot, but TIE fighter versus X-Wing the challenge is the TIE fighter has no shields. You know, it's not as robust a ship. You can only get shot once or twice and you're dead, you know? So they had the progression where you start out in your regular TIE fighter, but then after a while you could play some of the other, the the TIE advanced, the TIE bomber, you know, TIE TIE defender and so forth. Uh, These ships, you know, that we consider EU ships now, uh, very popularly were introduced in, in, in TIE fighter. And what would they do? They'd put you up against, you know, factions of the empire so that you could fight other TIE fighters. Because if you're always, if you fight X wings right off the bat, it's really not a fair fight, you know? Hmm. But, uh, yep. I used to enjoy that. And I used to, I used to love using the cheat so that I could be the, the single tie fighter that takes down the renegade star destroyer. <laughs> I just sit right behind it. and well, shoot, 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 See, I never played those cause we never had computers powerful enough for that. For mm. those games we had, my dad got an, uh, a, 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 what is it, an IBM PC compatible? And he'd always be like, I didn't buy this to play games on. Oh, of course not. Why, why bother playing games on a computer? You know? <laughs> yeah. Where I was just the opposite. I was every time I got a new computer, it's yes, I certainly do intend to use the word processor and everything for school, but you're, you're buying I'm going to make games. sure that it's got the, the computer. It's got the computational ability to, to run modern games. Yeah. Now, uh, I had a Super Nintendo, and of course, people have already brought this up in the chat. I had, I'm reading in a magazine, and they announced Super Star Wars for the Super Nintendo, because everything, like a lot of the titles on the Super Nintendo would have Super in the title. You're Mm -hmm. not just getting the regular game. It's Super, okay? So they announced Super Star Wars for the Super Nintendo. I'm like, what is this? And it's a side-scrolling action game, and you're playing as Luke Skywalker. You're on Tatooine. You're fighting Scorpions. You're fighting the uh, Sarlacc Pit Monster as your first boss. Wow. It comes up out of the ground. (laughs) They actually... They redo a bit. They play a little fast and loose a little bit with the plot to make it so it fits a game better, you know? Yeah. Like, instead of you going to buy R2-D2 and C-3PO, you're actually going to, uh, you're you're actually having to storm the Sandcrawler, and you're shooting Jawas (laughs) left and right. It's fun shooting Jawas. I would imagine it is. I just can't picture Luke doing it. You know what? Uh it's a game just maybe the it. maybe the 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 luke skywalker of the power of the jedi from the 90s <laughs> the one with the open shirt and the broad shoulders there you, you go know. um auditor dread is asking <laughs> any love for shadows of the empire i know that shadows of the empire was a multimedia thing the the problem is i missed the video games on it so i didn't get to play i those i had it because i bought a nintendo 64 oh did you and it was i know it came i think it came out on both pc and nintendo 64 correct sure mm-hmm. and i got the got it on nintendo 64 not terribly impressed with that game it, at the moment it was interesting because of course 
that at that point the whole 3D graphics or you know the moving around in three dimensions your character was a, was still a relatively new thing. Yeah. And they actually had the Star Wars music in the game, the actual John Williams score instead of it just being like a MIDI version. Right. And you know you start out as this character Dash Dash Rendar and you're you're with the rebels on Hoth and of course now that they can finally do 3D properly you can finally do the thing where you get to hook the cable around the AT AT and you know three dimensions and you know sure. it was Rogue Squadron. So that one was really neat because it was I think it was inspired by your x-wing and tie fighter games but the company that made it wanted to differentiate it so it was more based on surface combat instead right. of space combat so you're like you're like on tatooine shooting down you know uh, tie fighters and whatnot instead of being in space and they actually got complaints about that they said there weren't enough space missions so later on they made star wars episode one battle for naboo where you're playing as uh, you know a couple of uh naboo de- naboo defenders okay they're not really named characters okay you're just sure. they're people that work for the security on naboo whatever whatever there is of it and you know you're shooting probe droids and the fu- not not probe droids um trade federation droids and there was a neat scene when the game starts out you can tell factor five had a sense of humor because jar jar binks walks out mm-hmm and a huge Nintendo 64 uh, symbol falls out of the sky and, and crushes him. And then you hear, <laughs> and you hear him scream, Bastard! <laughs> he sounds like Bastard! And oh, Factor 5 had funny. They had a, uh, they'll, like in, when, when, the, when Star Wars Rogue's Rogue Squadron came up for the GameCube, it starts out and it's the, you see like a, a dancing number of stormtroopers, you know, waving flags around and it turns into the, Lucas Arts symbol and it's it's being played to the cantina music. Oh, you know, <laughs> like it's a musical number. And That's then when funny. they did the the third one, uh Rebel Strike, uh uh they had uh they did they had all the game characters because in this game not only did you play in the ships, you could also roam around with the characters on the surface. So they had like um you know uh uh you know a hut slayer Leia or slave layer as we used to call her yeah. uh, Han Solo Luke Skywalker on a disco dance floor. And nice. the Star Wars disco song is playing. Remember the Star Wars disco song? And you have like a, a and the disco ball was a Death Star. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, 1977. That's that was that was the era. And the neat thing about the third one, Rebel Strike on the Super Nintendo, was you could unlock the old Atari arcade games in it. Oh, like, nice. Like you, you would go and enter in these codes and you would get all three of them. You got the Return of the Jedi one. Remember the one that was like, it was that weird one you didn't like you were telling me about? Yeah, the, then the, third, other... the, the, the angular one. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other two, the Empire Strikes Back one and the mm-hmm. Star Wars one the with Star the vector Wars graphics. And they, they're in that yeah. game. And that's, it's just neat. They used to throw those things. This team, they were Factor 5. They were called Factor 5. Really experts at their craft. They. Nice. They they put a lot of attention to detail. I remember when Rogue Squadron came out for the GameCube, and the reviewers were looking at it and they were saying, "You can actually see like while you're shooting around, like the like attacking like this fortress or whatever, you can actually see little stormtroopers scurrying around on like the surface of it." You know, that was like that that much detail in that game back then. That was like, I think in 2001. But uh, no, I yeah, and uh, pity Factor Five kind of went under. Um, they did. They were working on a Rogue Squadron trilogy game that had all three of the games in it for the Nintendo Wii, and they said they had the entire thing finished, and they even had extra modes in it. But sadly, I think that was right around the time of the housing uh, crash. Oh, oh gosh! And Lucas Arts, I think, scaled back, and they didn't want to publish. And I don't know why Nintendo didn't take up the reins and publish it themselves. For the Wii, because uh, they used to do that with the Lucas Arts games, they could have published it themselves. Yeah, and they didn't bother. And then you know we never got it. And it's funny because they even added extra stuff to it. Like you could actually use the Wii Mote like a lightsaber, and they even had like the duel with Obi Wan and Darth Vader. You could play that. Oh they man, actually showed scenes of it, but we didn't get it. So what can you do? That's killer. Yeah. 